Making the decision to have an abortion is a really tough one. So if you want to hear my story, keep watching. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel, Dr. Kelly Cavett. On this channel, as I've explained previously, I am bringing awareness to mental health as well as having overall life discussions. If you haven't seen my previous video, I'll post it here. Please watch that part first. Well, you get a little bit more in depth of my story dealing with postpartum and antepartum depression. So today I have my husband here again with me. Um, it's really important and necessary that he's here to kind of discuss the second part of my postpartum depression as well as abortion story. To kind of give you, uh, for those of you that haven't seen it, um, I did suffer through antepartum depression, in which, like I said, I discussed in the first video, antepartum depression is depression while or during pregnancy. Um, unlike postpartum depression, it happens after pregnancy, after you've delivered. So during my struggles with antepartum depression, I was extremely sick the entire time, couldn't eat, barely slept, just wasn't myself. I... Not only did I go through a lot, my husband and my child went through a lot. Uh, my family went through a lot because everybody was just hoping and praying and wishing that I can feel somewhat better than what I was feeling. So everybody kind of went through it. I got to the point where uh, I kind of just felt like let me cause, let me purposely cause myself to have a miscarriage. And that's truly antepartum depression is when you feel like you just can't take it anymore that you're willing to either harm yourself or your unborn child. It's serious. You, you really should, if anybody is experiencing that, uh, have experienced it and, and haven't dealt with it, you got to seek help. Because it only leads to postpartum depression, which can last until it's taken care of. So today, I just kind of, we're going to go through our story, our abortion story, how we got to the point of saying, okay, let's, I, I, I have to have an abortion. Um, and again, it's important that you watch the first video because you'll get a little bit more in depth. Uh, look at what I really was going through, how I, I got to the point of like, this is it. I, I can't do this anymore. This is it. So, uh, they, I, I don't know if you want to, what you want to start from like the very beginning, kind of like when we found out we were pregnant or how you want to do it. We don't have anything planned, y'all. <laughs> this is just really us talking to you because we know that Somebody has experienced this before um, and they're dealing with it in silence. So they're feeling like they're the only ones that went through it or is going through it. So we just want to give our story because it can be an inspiration or help to somebody to say, hey, you know what? She made it through it. They made a decision through it uh, to get through it. So maybe I can do the same. Uh, and if your decision is different. You know, it, it's truly your decision. It is truly up to you. So, I don't know. I um, start from the very beginning, from, you know, when we discovered that we were expecting and pro go through those steps, the progression to that day. Well, first of all, <laughs> I have a 10-year-old and my husband at, well, at the time, two it was nine, right? No, seven. Nine. What, seven? Well, it's about to be 11 this year. Sorry, y'all. You get old, you, your age. <laughs> Sorry. But um, anyway, I already had a seven-year-old. My husband already had a 21-year-old. 
So we were not looking to have any more kids. As I explained in the previous video, I had already been through it. My pregnancies just does not go well. I, um, I suffer a lot when I'm pregnant. So I was not planning on having any more children at all. <laughs> and I'm sure my husband was not thinking about having any more children because his child was already 21 years old. No more kids for us. <laughs> so, um, so mind you, we, we were married and we conceived after marriage. And uh, I just remember I had made some collard greens <laughs> and I just kept, <laughs> I kept wanting to eat collard greens and hot sauce. I, you don't remember when I was telling you? Yes. I, I was on the phone with him and I can remember sitting at the bar and I just kept eating bowls of collard greens and hot sauce. I love collard greens, by the way. <laughs> I was like, what is going on with me? Like, I don't really eat hot stuff like that. So I was like, okay, you know what? Let me take a, let me take a pregnancy test. Took the pregnancy test and it came back. I was pregnant. I was like, oh my God. It's a hell of a way to determine that you want to take a pregnancy <laughs> test. Just an over consumption of collard greens. <laughs> because the thing is, not for real, though, like, I don't really. Collard, n number one, we don't cook collard greens that, that often. Your concern was that you kept dashing them with hot sauce. And hot yes. sauce is my thing, you know. You know that's, a, that's his thing, hot sauce. So. I kept eating the collard greens with hot sauce. Anyway, turned out I was pregnant. So he was on the road. And what did I do? Did I send you a picture? She sent me a picture of a positive pregnancy test while I was in the mountains of Pennsylvania. You know, going across country delivering chemicals. Yes. So I sent the picture. And what did you say? Like something like... Uh, I don't remember what I said. I think I said it's like... I think you put like question marks. It was just like a whole bunch of question marks. Yeah, like I was stuck. Even though I knew what it was, it was like, okay, why are you showing me this? But, <laughs> I think know, he really I was, was just that was like, my, okay. that, was, that was my sense of shock, if you will. So, we were pregnant. So, were you excited though? Yeah, I was uh, excited. I know how you really felt when you, when you I was it. I was genuinely surprised. But I don't know why I would have been surprised considering the activities that it takes to get to that point. But I was surprised. But yet, I was happy. You know? So it was like, okay, a little person. You know, it came from left field. Never expected it. So, I was I was excited. Um, so, from there, like I said, I the only thing that I was that I was feeling in the very, very beginning was extreme fatigue. So, you know, I, I was extremely tired. That was another thing that made me take the pregnancy test because I was so tired. It was just like, this is not normal. I, I'm, I'm so fatigued. Like I could barely walk up the steps or anything. So that's what, that's what got me to that point. So fast forward, uh, we took a cruise, right? Yeah, we went on a cruise. Yeah. Um, the cruise unfortunately had already been paid for prior to us finding out that we were pregnant. Mm -hmm. I mean that she was pregnant. Well, but, we were pregnant. Um, you know, yeah. I just looked like it after you had to do it, but now <laughs> I, I'm still kind of holding on. Well, we both holding on to the problems, okay? Two, mm -hmm. almost three years later. <clears throat> but nonetheless, it was. You know, we went on a cruise, and it was her first cruise, so I was kind of excited about her having the experience, unbeknownst to me, that with her being pregnant, that it would be totally opposite of everything I expected. Everything that she had to force herself to have a good time, you know, just to not be locked up in a room. But if she would have had her way, she would have probably stayed in the room just resting and eating every once in a while the entire cruise. But she tried to make the best of it, but between an acute sense of smell and I motion sickness, still, and, and it was just too much. I can still smell. 
the smell of that room on that cruise. Yeah, needless to say, I have to do a do-over with a cruise because she ends of being pregnant on her first cruise. So it wasn't a good thing for her, though. You know, and from there, in my opinion, from the cruise forward into the pregnancy, everything just kind of went down. Went here. downhill. Things got progressively worse with morning. It wasn't even morning sickness didn't last long. It was just the constant nausea all the time, not knowing what to eat. Whatever she did eat made her feel bad. Never being able to get comfortable. It was just, you know, and for me because. I'm so into how she feels. Anything, anytime she spend, experiences more than a few minutes of discomfort, it puts me in a place where I feel discomfort because I'm always like, what's wrong? How can I help? What do you need to do? And it was nothing that could be done. It was just part of the process, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I do know like starting, well, still at, at the cruise, or on the cruise, I remember having to go to the emergency room. I didn't even know they had a hospital on the cruise or emergency room on a cruise. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, y'all, she she was totally new to cruise and she didn't know that there was a hospital on the cruise. <laughs> I she guess I should have thought that about that. A, she didn't know that there was jail on the cruise. All of those things exist for all you people out there who've never cruised before. Yes, there is jail on the cruise ship. <laughs> Still, I, I don't even remember that. <laughs> but, but yeah, so I ended up having to go to the emergency room on the cruise, had to get an IV bag. Anyway, um, once we got back home, like he said, everything just kind of started going downhill. I, I was not getting better. We didn't have uh, insurance. I think we were paying for Obamacare, yeah. and it was extremely expensive. It, it was so expensive I'm talking about like $900 a month for them still not to cover everything. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. So I ended up, I did find a doctor. I wasn't happy with the physician that I had, but I kept going because I know I had to go. But I wasn't getting any relief. You know, I, I had to go to a GI specialist to try and see what was going on with my throat. Because as I told you in a previous video, I kept feeling like there was a ball or something stuck in my throat. And that is truly what prevented me from eating. So, like I said, I lost 30 pounds during that pregnancy. I remember one time he came home from off the road and you was just like, oh my God, you look so small. You Do you remember that time when you came home? I don't remember vividly but I do remember that there was a time when I came home and I noticed there was weight loss and to speak to the um, instances of having to go to the doctor and not you know ever get any relief with results and Obamacare and everything it just it was all of those things just piled on and piled on you know um, having to have Obamacare the, the opposite of it would have been to not have anything at all. And I couldn't imagine it being any wor I mean, worse than that, but from what we were told and what we know, not having any insurance at all would have been worse than having Obamacare, but you know. Um, and then we didn't qualify for Medicaid or anything. And I'm not ashamed. If we're at a point where we need the help, we need the help. It is it's just what it is. And that's for anybody. If you need the help, don't don't allow pride to get you in the way because I'm very prideful. Um, but I do know it's to a certain extent. When I need help, I reach out. You know, I we've had to reach out to our family members for help. Um I I apply for every type of assistance from food stamps to Medicaid. I apply for everything. They denied us for everything. They said that the money that we made was too much and I get it um, but I wasn't working consistently my husband was working then they said he made too much money so in return we had to end up just going on ahead paying for the Obamacare and just getting what we could get and <clears throat> excuse me and 
please be aware, um, I'm by no means, I mean, I'm sure there'll be somebody who will have a comment in this climate of, you know, political warfare. This is by no means any way to bash Obamacare or mm -hmm. anything of the like. It's just giving an uh, insight to that being one of the key proponents along with other things to where we traveled down this, you know, somewhat dark road and it was a very difficult time. But, you know, it's not in any way a bash against anything, anybody or anyone pro-Obamacare or anti-Obamacare, whatever your preference. Right, right. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's not about that. It's just about the fact that we were dealing with a lot and trying to seek assistance from the government was not there. It, it just, it wasn't there for us. And I, I've always felt like when you need the assistance after, after working all of these years that we've worked, I feel like we should have been the first ones to get the assistance. But unfortunately, as we all know, you can't get it unless you lie about it. You got to lie or embellish the truth in some type of way in order for you to get the assistance. And most times, that's just that's just not our thing. We'll just rather be like, you know what, forget it. Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to sleep you know, with that kind of thing going on. But, you know, <laughs> that's not the case for a lot of other people, obviously. But that's another video for another day. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, but on to the medical aspect of this and how we progressed into mental setbacks and you know, pain and anguish. So, um, what, what, what was the last thing I was saying? After the cruise. Oh, yeah, so, after the cruise. <laughs> um, so again, like I said, it just started getting worse for me. I, I, w I just wasn't getting any relief. I felt terrible. I, I cried pretty much every day, all day. I don't think I had a break ever in crying or feeling bad or, or, or sad or angry and upset. I was angry at God because I was just like, God, are you not hearing us? Like, why, you know, why is it that I'm not getting the relief that I need? Like, I, I know I went through this with my first, you know, pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And now it's my second pregnancy and it's, it's terrible. It's worse than my first pregnancy. And, and, and it just... You know, I was, I was angry. I, I can't even lie. I was angry with God. I was questioning, you know, why, why, why we're not getting relief, why we're not, be, we're not financially able to have everything that we need to maybe get me to a better doctor, you know, and we were already paying eight, to, I think seven to eight hundred dollars for the Obamacare a month. So it was just like, yeah. And then you combine that with the fact that my profession as a independent owner operator on the road my profession had me to where I at that time I would spend two weeks consecutively on the road you know away from home so she had to endure all of this while I was on the road but that was my means of making money because she couldn't work so when you put all of that together it was a very very tough time for us so I oftentimes would feel bad you know through conversation and knowing that she was in pain and there was nothing I can do other than mm -hmm. try to do what I needed to do in order to keep the lights on, the roof over our head, and just the stuff that I'm supposed to do in that situation. But, you know, all of these things were key components to what led to a very dark place initially. You know, we eventually got through it, but these are things that were just progressively getting worse. You're right. Do you feel like do do you feel like you were depressed a little bit? Uh during this time? Yeah. Because I, I said in a previous video that I felt like you were depressed. Like I can I can see it because of the fact that you weren't able to help me or to help the situation outside of all that you know, all that you were already doing. So I kind of felt, like in the last video, I kind of just felt like you may have been depressed as well. I was definitely a bit depressed because, 
you know, the the repetition of my job, being on the road and traveling across the country, going state to state, you know, I couldn't get any joy out of it outside of knowing that I was providing financially for my family or doing the best I could because even that was a struggle at times. So yes, I was depressed because I wasn't able to help you. There was nothing else that I could do outside of prayer and just contributing as best I can. There was nothing that I could, no one thing that I could do to stop the pain or the discomfort immediately. So that was depressing for me because I'm a hands-on type of whatever it is that's wrong, let's let's try to fix it. You know, well, a lot of men are. I don't want to make it seem like I'm unique. Well, you are unique, babe. Thank you. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, so to get kind of back on track, the months are passing by. I'm now at a place where either I need to make I need to make a decision before it's too late. When I you know to the point where I can't make a decision of if I'm going to have an abortion or not. So with me feeling the way that I was feeling, um, I, I just said you know what I had already went through the bout of trying to purposely cause myself to have a miscarriage by making myself fall down the stairs. And now I'm at this place where I'm not getting any relief. So I just had enough. And the, all the, the, the purposeful attempts at trying to have a miscarriage was unbeknownst to me. So I know that she was in a dark place because it's not like you call up you know, a significant other and say, hey, by the way, I tried to have a miscarriage. I tried to hurt myself today. So, you know, that was unbeknownst to me all the way up until probably after, no, probably right before the actual plan to go through with an official abortion. Right. So I, um, you know, I called. I called, uh, I booked an appointment, and, and I think before I made the official appointment, I believe we had discussed it back and forth probably for about a week or so, and, and I was serious. I was like, I know, you know, that's not what you want. My family are trying, you know, they were trying to encourage me and be like, Kel, you know, let's you know, let's pray about it. You know, try to let's try to see if you can do different things. Like I told y'all in the previous video, my aunts, my mom, uh, my Auntie Sonia has sent me a whole bunch of candy to try anything to try to help me out, to try to get me through this. Nothing was working. So I was just tired. I, I, I was tired. And as I stated, um, it was a selfish thought because I was thinking about me and how I felt in the moment. I wasn't thinking about anybody else, not not you. Not the unborn child, uh, not my child, not my family. I was thinking about me and just being able to get some relief mentally as well as physically. So I, I, uh, I told him and I decided that, hey, I'm, I, I scheduled the appointment. And we had the appointment scheduled. Um, and, and we went. We, we drove in the direction. We drove. <laughs> we drove there here uh, uh, in Houston. We dr we drove to the appointment. Uh, but before that, I can honestly say that um, I had my mom, I had my aunt to call me and just try to give me some encouragement so that I wouldn't go through with it. Because I did let them know that... I I was going to go ahead on and, and, and have an abortion. You know, I, it, it wasn't like I wasn't trying to keep it a secret from anybody per se, you know, uh, just, you know, my small immediate family knew. Uh, but, you know, before then, <laughs> right before then, that morning, I received a phone call from my youngest brother on my mom's side. And if anybody know my youngest brother, uh, <laughs> he is not religious. <laughs> he is not like the perfect 
you know what, well, nobody is perfect. So I want to say nobody is perfect. But if anybody knows my youngest brother, he is not the one to be giving sound advice, should I say. But he called me that morning right before we were getting ready to leave. And I hadn't talked to him in a minute. And he was just like, uh, hey, Kel, I just, I was calling you and... You know, my mom and them told me that you would think about having an abortion. And I told them, yes, I, you know, I didn't feel well. I needed to have some relief that I was about to go and have an abortion. And so he told me that he prayed for me. And then some of the things, now mind you, I don't remember everything he was saying, but I just know that what he was saying was not him. <laughs> and I remember telling my husband this, like, I know that that was God speaking through him because he doesn't speak like that. And the things that he was saying, it wasn't my little brother. Put it to you. It just wasn't my little brother. And so, and I felt that. I felt that way. And I had to, I told my husband and I was just like, the way he was talking, that is not him. That had to be God speaking through him the same morning <laughs> that we were getting ready to go. So fast forward. You want it? <laughs> no, I mean, we fast forward to the actual day. You know, of course, I'll never forget it. But unbeknownst to her, I had no intention on going through with it. But I felt like. I could play on her emotions, for lack of a better word, by driving in a direction and going to the facility because I knew that there would be a demonstration and a protest in front of this particular clinic. As there is in many clinics in large cities, there's always a group of people with signs that's anti-abortion and so on and so forth. So sure as shooting, we get in the car, we drive down, she's tearful the whole way through and I'm pretty somber, driving, 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 driving. We get down there, and just as sure as I'm sitting here, there's about six or seven people as you turn off of the street into the entrance of the establishment to go in to the abortion clinic with signs. And, you know, they weren't rude or rowdy, but they're shouting things as we, you know, try to pull in. But long story short, I never made it into the parking lot before she had a breakdown. I attempted to drive in but the people were like blocking us and I made the block and before I could get back to make a second attempt to get in she was like no 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 we gotta go we gotta go and so and, and I know he probably don't remember but he's missed a part so he's right as we drove up the people were picketing and they had their signs and I just broke down I like everything in me I, I, I just broke down. I started crying. So what he did, he backed up and we went on side of the building and we parked in a vacant parking lot across the, up like across the little street from the actual abortion clinic. And we sat there and we both cried. And why am I tearing up? Because you cried. <laughs> so... I don't have to cry because my baby's here now, so. So, we sat there and we just cried. Yeah, because it had been a rough road and we still knew that we were probably a little less than the halfway point, you know, from the baby actually being born. So we knew, <laughs> we knew we still had a ways to go, but at that moment we knew that we couldn't we couldn't go through what what was supposed to happen on that day we knew it wasn't going to happen so the joy the the tears were tears of you know joy relief frustration and anticipating you know going forward what we had to do so uh well yes um uh, we sat in that parking lot, uh, we cried, and I remember you saying to me, I know that it's ultimately your decision, mm -hmm. 
but we can't do this today. And, you know, I, I just said, okay. Because at that point, you know, I, um, excuse me, y'all. At that point, I really was, you know, I was too full. I couldn't go in there. It, it was just too much. It was unbearable. And then I, I, you know, I was thinking about the people picketing it. And I was thinking about my brother calling me earlier that morning. And I kept saying, this has to be God just saying, Kelly, I'm here with you. Keep pushing. You know, y'all are going to make it through. So I'm so happy that my husband was there because I... I I had already made this decision before. I've, I've gone through with an abortion before. And uh, I didn't want to go through that again. And knowing how sick I was, it was really possible that I was. If, if I was by myself, I may have went through that again. Um, and I, did, I, I didn't want to do that again. So I, 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 I'm very thankful that you were there, that uh, that God was with us, you know, and that you had already, like you said, I didn't even know that he had never even planned for me to go in there anyway. He just was driving me there just to give me some type of, I guess, a sense of gratification to know that I possibly, you know. Yeah, I you know, our struggles were different as we left our home that day on the way to the abortion clinic. You know, unbeknownst to her, her struggle was having to deal with possibly going through with this abortion. My struggle was with having to deal with her after telling her that she was not going to do it or I wouldn't allow it. So, you know, I was trying to process and deal with how I was going to deal with that as a husband and as a man. But, you know, nonetheless, it worked perfectly. It worked out the way God intended it to. There was no resistance, but it was an enlightening moment. And to be honest with you, I think it probably brought us closer and it was still a tough road to deal with with the rest of the pregnancy, but it wasn't as tough. You know, it was it was still some some bad it days. It was still bad. <laughs> but it wasn't as tough. And I think we reflected on that moment later on in the pregnancy as, you know, she was visibly, you know, larger and we had gone through a through a couple of um, doctors' visits, you know, one in which when we did the uh what do you call the little x ray? I might have lost for words. The ultrasound. The, when we did the ultrasound and the baby, you know, our baby was visibly in there sucking her thumb and we could almost make out a smile. You know, you know, maybe you would only see that as a parent, but, you know, that's what I saw. But anyway. Was blowing bubbles and smiling. And she could never keep still. In the still. ultrasound. She could never keep still, much like she is, she is today. But nonetheless, um, that was my struggle. It was, you know, having to deal, perhaps possibly deal with, you know, what could have happened or the rift that might have been between us had we not, I mean, had she wanted to still go through with it. I was fully prepared to just drive back home and be like, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it by yourself. And then I don't know what I would have said after that because, you know, she can be pretty stubborn. So... I just thank God that we didn't have to go through all of that. We got to a point where, you know, he put it on our hearts and in our minds that, you know, this was only a rough patch and that he was with us. We made it through. We made it through. At the end of the day, we we made it through. We have a beautiful, almost three-year-old now. Um, yeah, she's a handful. Terrible. <laughs> As a matter of fact, she might be punishing us for even considering terminating her. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're getting it back, now. I think she she's punishing us a little bit. Yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. And um, if there's anybody watching this video, be it male, female, couples, whatever, alike, just know that you know. Anything that we've described is not easy. 
the words cannot prepare you for what possibly you could be in store for. It's far worse. It could be far worse than we're describing. If you are, in fact, a female that just has notorious difficult pregnancies. And that was the case for her. But we made it through. And it was a combination of, you know, God, resilience, patience, strength, and just, you know, unity between the two of us. And if you're experiencing anything like anything we've described or described or said in this video, just know that, you know, you're not unique. We're not the only ones. There's someone else that has gone through or will go through this. And just know that there's multiple ways to deal with it. And, you know, the one thing that you cannot do is deal with it alone. Or um, in silence. Yeah, you have to speak to each other constantly, no matter how uncomfortable the conversations may be or may get. And if at all possible, if you if there are family members between the two of you, either on both sides or one side of the family, if there's a family member who can who is capable of listening and offering wisdom without being judgmental or telling you or imposing their thoughts or their decisions on you, you need to gravitate towards that person because yeah. all family members, you know, although they may mean well, and it's not even just family members, people in general, they will impose what they think you should do or what they would do in your situation. Mm -hmm. And that's not fair to anyone in any situation because everyone is unique and so is their situation and their reaction to it. So, you know, but here we are. Well, you pretty much said it. <laughs> You pretty much led me out of this video, but uh, that's just pretty much what, what I was going to say to kind of close out. Um, again, we did not go through with the abortion. I, I did still have a lot of complications um, during as well as even after the baby. So, but we made it through. And again... We're only bringing this story out. We're only telling you or talking about this because it's a topic that people shy away from because they're scared that they're going to be ridiculed. They're scared that somebody is going to, uh, I think I've had, I had somebody on my previous video that didn't even know the story. They didn't even know how the story ended, but they automatically assumed that we went through with the abortion and they gave me a whole spill under the comment section of my last video. Not disrespectful, but just trying to get their point across. And one thing I can say is everybody has a freedom of choice. Um, and I believe in the freedom of choice. And I also feel like that everybody has an opinion. Uh, but just know that whatever you decide is for you. You have to deal with your own situations. Everybody has to die for their own sins. And repent of their own sins. And, and the other thing is, no one sin is greater than the other. So, and I think people e even, you know, I have to put myself in check sometimes. There is no one sin that's greater than the other. So just because my sin may be that I even contemplated an abortion or had one previously doesn't mean that your sin of sleeping, sleeping with somebody before you were married or possibly dying and have hatred in your heart for somebody that had an abortion uh it doesn't make it any better than me so again don't worry about what people are going to think do what is best for you and we did what we felt what was best for our family for each other and uh and, and that's all that matters that's all that matters. We we cannot tell you one way or other. There's somebody that may be in a position that feels like they have to go forward with that abortion. You know, and if that's the case, then that that is your choice. That's your choice. And that's something that you will have to live with. You will have to deal with. And for me, whatever sins that I have, I repent daily for my sins. And you know, the greatest thing out of it all 
is that once I repent and I ask God for forgiveness, he forgave me right then and there. The next, the hardest thing for, um, for us to do is to forgive ourselves. So you ask God for forgiveness, he will forgive you. You got to forgive yourself. And a, a really big thing for me is forgiving myself of the things that I've went through, the decisions that I've made. But I know as far as the abortion is concerned and the abortions that I had previously, um, I forgave myself. I asked for forgiveness. I forgave myself. I'm moving past it. And that's not a path that I'm going to go through or go back down again. So again, just make sure that you are doing what's best for you. And don't worry about what people are going to think of you. Everybody has an opinion. They're, they're going to leave it. Me exposing our personal life. For the world to see pretty much because it's on youtube it's on a video it opens up the possibility that somebody is going to comment disrespectfully or you know want to shell out whatever like the the anti-abortion and etc that it, it exposes me for that and i'm okay with that i'm okay with that because i know that i'm doing what i feel like god is calling me to do and that is to share my experiences with you so that if you are going through it or have been through it, you just need to know you're not alone. You're not the only one. You're not alone. You have anything else to say about that? Nope. <laughs> so, y'all, I guess that is it for this um, this abortion, postpartum, antepartum, and abortion story for us. You will get to see a little bit more of my husband because as I stated on this channel, I am not only talking about um, breaking mental health barriers. I also want to do things that helps you uh, with your mental health. And one of those things is laughter. So we have something coming up that we hope you guys will laugh. Oh, we do? <laughs> we do. Oh. <laughs> he, he knows, but he don't know. You know, but we will do something where we're going to bring some laughter because at the end of the day, for me, laughter is everything because I can have plenty of days where I'm not laughing, where it's just extremely serious. And you got to break that up. You got to break that up. For our mental health, uh, we have to break it up. You have to bring some laughter into your life. So. I'm charging for the next video. <laughs> he think that every time I do videos. That the video with him on it get the most likes and the most views. <laughs> Man, you know, click the like button. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, so that leads us right into make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Leave us comments. Uh, leave me comments on any of my social platforms. Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. Oh, you think I should throw your name on here? You want me to add your name? Man, my name is Norman. <laughs> Just go ahead on and comment about me so she can see that I that I need to charge for this. <laughs> so I might add his name across here so you can follow him on his page because he will be starting his YouTube channel very soon. But of course, it's going to be completely different from mine. His channel is going to be strictly about sports because this is my little sports analyst. And uh, we're going to be looking forward to his channel. But please, again, subscribe, like comment let us know what else you would like to see or hear from me or us um and then don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll know the next time i upload so until next time y'all bye